everyone, and welcome to another episode of Grassy Tracer. As this week is the halfway mark of the year, and I thought I would bring to you guys some half year highlights. I have already spoken to some awesome guests this year that are involved in grassroots racing. And there's a few legends in the sport who I've managed to talk to about their motorsport journeys and how they're still involved in motorsport today. For those who don't know, grassroots racing started back in December, 2020. And now I've done 67 episodes and I hope to get to 100 by the end of this year. So keep tuning in each week as I still have awesome guests on the way. And I hope you enjoy these highlights for the first half of 2022. Did a couple track days at Winton in Phillip Island. So you then went onto the dirt in the gravel and stuff like that. Is it um, difficult to sort of get the hang of that stuff? Uh, I don't know. I think there's a lot of skill in the dirt. It, it teaches you to be comfortable with the car moving around and and really feeling the levels of grip. So um, uh, I didn't find too much difficulty. Um, the dirt, I like a lot better. It's a lot more fun. I just um, like the look of circuit cars better. But explain to the viewers how important it is to have a good co-driver and can it make a difference to how well you perform as a team? I'm always surprised that some people change regularly. I mean, um, I think it's extremely important and the top guys, um, you know, they will pay um, good navigators to come and sit with them because um, it can make a massive difference. Like I know um, uh, some of the navigators, some of the other guys have used that they've, you know, these are people that um, they go through all the notes. They'll tell the service crew what time they need to be, where and how much fuel they need to put in and check the tyres, make sure everything's organised before all, all the rallies. Still racing today in the Touring Car Masters category. I can't wait to hear more about his motorsport journey. Welcome John Bell, or as JB is, he's also known to many people. Yeah, thanks mate. It's nice to, um, to connect with guys starting out in their racing life. I mean, I was one once and, um, you know, we all start at the start. There's no other way to start. And do you, would you say that grassroots races my age, do you think that Formula V and Formula Ford are good categories to start out in for open wheel absolutely. racing? Absolutely. The best, the best, absolutely. No question, nothing else. I mean, I know there's a big upsurge in Hyundai XL racing, uh, but I think, you know, open wheelers are much more delicate to drive. They take much more technique. They don't forgive uh, mistakes as much. I, I honestly think that, you know, starting in open wheel racing, that's my opinion. I mean, it may not be everybody's opinion. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, Formula, Formula V, Formula Ford is definitely no question the way to go in motor racing. Absolutely no question. Mm. I would be, you know, I'd argue with anybody that it's any different. Be dedicated. I mean, the, the, there's so many knocks that happen, you know, it can be, with it be a car unreliability or things people driving into you or making a mistake yourself or whatever you just got to keep on going you got to keep focusing you got to be dedicated do your best always do your best and that that means in every way you know with your sponsors if you have sponsors if you have sponsors you're lucky and just you know try your hardest do your best maybe we can do the bath of six hour together in a year or two I'll be um, up for that. Okay. Well, you talk to Pedders and Bendigo mm -hmm. because uh, they're good people, yeah. great people, and uh, they, they've done the Bathurst Six Air a few times. So I'd be up for them. I'd, I'd, be up I'd, for them. I'd, I'd make sure we get the car and then we can do it. <laughs> okay. I'll be up for them. Okay. Here with Angelo. He owns a very rare car. So, Angelo, do you want to tell me a bit about it? Yeah, it's the um, L John Special. Um, it was built in 1960 in Dandenong, funny enough, um, and there was a guy called Bill Law Milnes who owned the um, Renault and Peugeot dealership, 
and on Friday nights his mechanics would build race cars for him, so Derek Smith and Richie Hillier. And this is number one of about seven that they built. That's amazing, Angelo. And you've been racing this car since 2016 or driving it around. Yep. Um, have you, have you really built like a, a love for it? Yeah, no, it's really good. So my father-in-law and father helped me with it as well. So all three of us are involved and now my sons and daughters come around to the events as well. So it's sort of a bit of a family car. And um, yeah, it's just, it's part of us now, I suppose. Adrian, just quickly, very nice job with the car since we last um, talked about it on my show. Yeah, thank you. Um, but could you just quickly tell everyone why you're here today? Yep, so today we're doing a car show fundraiser for Calvin Baker, who had an accident. Um, so he's currently in the Alfred Hospital. Um, so this is to help his family with recovery. Um, Calvin's going to be on, off work for some time, so just supporting his family. Calvin's an absolute, probably one of the best, best blokes I know. Just one of those guys that just helps anybody at any time. So um, that's why we're here today is to support Calvin and his family. Uh, and it's been a fantastic turnout and we've, we've raised a lot of money. So that's really good. And he's also done karting and worked with motorsport teams like Gary Rodders Motorsport, Wilson Racing and Brad Jones Racing. He's also faced a lot of health challenges along the way, but that hasn't stopped him from doing what he loves. It's a big welcome to Benjamin Longland. So how are you tonight, Benjamin? I'm very well, thank you, Ayrton, and thank you for having me on the show. Uh, really good, big follower of the show and uh, love what you do. Thanks, Ben. Where did it all start for you? Probably about age five or, so, or four is the earliest memory I've got with motorsport. My family is not exactly uh, motorsport orientated. Uh, but I remember watching Formula One Grand Prix, the Australian Grand Prix as a kid, watching Michael Schumacher dominate over over um, Mika, Mika Hakkinen and dressing in all red and trying to ride my bike fastest round. And, you know, imagine that I'm Michael Schumacher um, from a very young age. So Also an ambassador for Lymphoma Australia, helping to raise awareness, which is awesome. Can you share with the viewers what they might be able to do to help people who are going through what you experienced. Yeah, absolutely. So Lymphoma Australia, a really fantastic uh, organisation. Um, my my dealings with them has been more towards the end of my journey with with with, uh, with my battle with cancer, which has been since October last year. Um, so August, August I was in hospital for the biopsy and we found out in October that it was a, a Hodgkin's lymphoma cancer that had attacked my trachea. Um, so I could barely breathe. Yet the month beforehand, I competed and actually broken several personal bests at Queensland Raceway. Um, so how I did that, I have no idea. It's just, again, just something that I just pushed myself to do. Um, but it's uh, linking up with Lymphoma Australia now is, has been something more towards the end of my treatment. So to find out more, let's welcome Kev the Noise Davies from all the way from sunny Queensland. How are you tonight, Kev? Good, mate. How are you going? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I'm great, Kev. And as we were talking about before, everyone has a passion for motorsport. Where'd you get yours? All right. So uh, first of all, having had motorbikes in the UK and emigrating about 12 or 13 years ago, I got to this country. I think I was going to kill myself on the motorbikes that I bought here. So got rid of them. And funnily enough, some of my customers, because I sell oil, are into kart racing. So I started to look at kart racing. I bought a go-kart. I went to Warwick and became a member at Warwick Kart Club, where I do commentate at the moment. And uh, I, I went and had my first race, having sort of practiced a little bit, went and had my first race. And it was really good fun. But then one day, uh, having helped in the canteen with my good mate Steve Lamb, who was the then canteen convener, uh, the president, Peter, uh, asked if anybody could commentate on a particular day because their commentator for, I think it was the Young Guns, hadn't turned up, wasn't available. So Steve Lamb said, Kev will do it, he's mad. So I commentated on that day for the first time ever. It's been lots of fun meeting you and having a chat about your involvement in motorsport. And I can see why a lot of people are loving what you're doing. Um, everyone, make sure you check out Kev's channels. Um, he, he does a really good job of his live comment commentary. And um, if you do see him with the cowboy hat, you know who it is.
Yeah, and also, guys, just remember, um, to head over to his channel and subscribe, and also to Flip Man Motorsports channel as well if you want to. Um, if you're racing this weekend, drive fast and take chances on the track, of course. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks mate really good to be with you and uh, the noise signing out good mate how are you great and like i mentioned um i've known you for quite a while now and we're both used to doing spring karting a lot of the time at the same tracks so can you take me back to where you first got the motorsport bug and how it all started yeah so i think when we first um first got into karting uh, I was really young uh, dad brought home a kart for um uh, I think it was probably five when dad brought home a kart um and just started in honestly just started in a truck yard just cutting laps um really fell into love with it and then through some close friends uh they were sprint karting and then they sort of just got us into it let's talk about 2022 because it's going to be a pretty exciting year of racing for you especially in the trans am category what attracted you to the most to driving these sort of cars? Well, I think the Trans Ams, um, when you look at what sort of level that they're on um, of competition, as you put it, it's probably to the equal part of um, of Super 3 or Super 2. So a lot of those drivers actually made the transition over. Um, and I think it was just the, the fact of how they are difficult to drive. Um, they're not ridiculously heavy for a car like the... 1200 1300 kilos for a race car um the bag tire was definitely an attraction because it was something different um you know the difficult to drive as you said the high horsepower so you're looking at i think it's roughly about 550 horsepower or thereabouts the competition in class is obviously really good people like um nathan hearn aaron seaton uh the likes of nash morris um you know even younger generations of previous supercar drivers like you've got jet johnson um you know dalton allery there's a lot of those guys who are super quick super competitive there's a lot of guys in there with a lot of experience like uh, owen kelly um you know with the likes of jrm backed by ambrose so it's good to really go in and get a feel for a field of guys who are you know really quick and have got a genuine amount of experience and are super competitive So I've had this car for three years. It's a 1973 uh, XP Falcon Coupe. Uh, it's turned into a race car in 2011. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm just uh, enjoying driving it and getting it out and circulating it. Um, so Greg, would you like to tell the viewers what you drive? I drive a Mazda RX-7. It's a space frame car. Uh, rotary 13B, naturally aspirated, fuel injected. Um, it's a really good car to drive. Um, we've, in fact, the car is faster than what I can drive it. Good, Dicky Lee. So, how are you tonight, Dicky? Hi, good, thank you. So, if you did grow up a Rambo sport, how did you get involved later on? Well, I grew up obviously watching V8 supercars like most people and Bathurst and my grandma used to like watch it, but that was back in the Brocky and, and Dick Johnson days. And then I used to go to Parramatta Speedway in Sydney and watch the sprints. And I always wanted to be a sprint car driver, but I wasn't around it really doing it. Um, we just watched it for fun and went as like a family outing, which was like a fun night out with mum. And um, Oran Park in Sydney, I don't even know if that still exists. Does it still exist? um yeah just watching it like at the track but that was it so um as far as getting started in motorsport i started riding motorbikes probably well i don't know 15 years ago 10 15 years ago um and then i hurt myself quite a bit yeah so i um i rode motorbikes first really had to have done your first race in it how did that go for you Oh, that was an ordeal. <laughs> so we were supposed to go to what was like a tested tune and we, we didn't finish the car in time. 
Um, and then the first rally of that year, which was only last year, was when I started. So in 2020, there was meant to be a rally. It got cancelled. Um, I can't remember if it was because of COVID or the weather, one or the other. And um, so then the first one was actually in May. So we'd been waiting. We'd got the car finished and then we said to sit and wait and we'd rushed to finish the car and then there was no rally. So the next available date to compete was actually the ARC rounds. So the Australian Rally Rounds is combined with the Queensland Rally Championship and it was at Gympie um, and it goes across two days. And it's now that we've been there, we know what we're in for, but we didn't have any idea what we were turning up to. We thought this was kind of be like a grassroots kind of thing, but it was a big show. Like it was the big show. <laughs> it's not for people, <laughs> you know, it was great. We went and there's a test day and there's a pace noted event and it's, it's four days really. And um, all the top teams, professional drivers, big, big money. And here's us little local team with the first built car. So yeah, it was, it was definitely memorable. I had the best time. It's a big welcome to Kev Flynn. So how are you tonight, Kev? Uh, good, thanks for having me along. This is, um, I think your little podcast is um, awesome. Yeah, we've been doing it for a while and I'm really enjoying it. When did you start drifting or did you do your stunts first? So I did, um, uh, started off doing driver training. Uh, I started with uh, two guys called, you've probably never heard of them, you're too young. Started with two guys called Jim Murcott and Peter Brock. Um, I started with those guys in 1989. Um, and I progressed through all the sort of stuff that they did. Um, and I got asked to do uh, some television commercial work. Um, back in those, so you've got to remember back in those days, I'm saying like an old person now, back in those days, um, the advertising laws in Australia uh, were very different to what they are now. So um, you could do all sorts of fun stuff. You know, we were doing skids and all sorts of wacky stuff. Uh, yeah, I've been at Sandown pretty much every day for the last 30 years, um, when, unless I'm at some other track. But yeah, I, my office is at Sandown, so we're there all, but like we're the permanent resident driving school there. So I saw you there. Right. Not last weekend, the weekend before. Yeah. Yep. But yep. what I'm going to say is, um, I think uh, a great thing to do is uh, to get into cars as quickly as you can and and people think getting into cars is expensive but if you're doing motor carners motor carners are ridiculously cheap and you're 12 years old and suddenly you're driving a car and you're doing it in a competition and you're learning to uh, rotate that car and break that car and make it turn and accelerate and all that sort of stuff it's fantastic i think um my, my, like James will be doing motor carners and skid pan work and all that sort of stuff um, pretty much the day he turns 12. Yeah, really like enjoy this chat, by the way. Um, so it's been really interesting speaking to you tonight, Kev. Um, and I think you could teach me a thing or two about drifting. To, be to tonight's guest who is racing in Formula Ford and is currently competing in Australian Formula 3 series with Gilmore Racing Team. So to find out more, welcome Noah Sands. So do you remember your first time at Phillip Island? Because I know for lots of people it's very different, like for me especially. Um, I remember how amazing it was. I do. It was first time I tested there in... 2019 me and tom Sargent, we tested there in preparation for 2020 and i remember coming onto the straight he was probably eight car lengths behind me and he's just flew past me and i thought surely his engines you know way better but then it turns out that's philip island you on the last lap you can be leading in, especially in form four the last lap you can be leading and then you can get to honda or mg and you'll be in fifth or sixth so you've got to learn how to um, – Phil Pollen's an amazing track, but you've got to learn how to use the draft to your advantage. And Formula Ford, everyone's so close, so you've got to sort of have that in your in your pocket, in your back pocket to um, try and make a gain from everyone else. Different compared to, you know, like having a wing and not having a wing. What sort of speeds, though, would you get in um, the Formula 3? Well – um, I don't know, at Sydney through turn one, we were doing 245, 250, which 
it may not sound that fast because um, where you've also got to realise with the, the downforce, it's resistance. So at some tracks, we it, other categories might be a little bit faster, but on lap time, we're faster just because of the mid-corner car- the mid corner speed we can carry. He previously sort of went into retirement, but now he's come back out of it and he's back into racing Formula Vs. So how are you tonight, Mason? Yeah, I'm very good. Thanks, mate. Thank you for having me. Um, probably still uh, got a lot to learn, but uh, we'll get there and just having fun at the moment, enjoying being back. You decide to jump into another category? I I did a oh did I do a couple of races in 2014 and the first race was a disaster. I um I literally had no idea and I'm the first one to put my hand up and admit it. I didn't know. Um, someone asked me how I was fitting in the car because I was having problems with all the pedals and I said really terribly and they had all the body work off and they looked and they said you need a poorer seat and I said poor seat what what's that how do you do that because I was just using a fiberglass seat from the last bloke who I brought it off me and um I happened to be a bit taller than him so so yeah after that one we did that and that dropped lap times pretty quickly um then I learned about oversteer and understeer and pressures and I reckon I must have I only must have done another six or so meets, maybe a couple more, I'm not sure, um, before I, I, um, I actually, funnily enough, just saw a Formula Ford at the right part price for sale on Gumtree and convinced my wife it was a great idea to let me buy it. <laughs> she wasn't my wife at the time. Mainly in Formula V, it's a very bit of a community, really, yeah. I've got a number of guys there. Um, if my car's broken, they'll just run over and they'll help you. It's... It's a good good category for that kind of thing. Yeah, that's it. Stay safe, mate, and um, all the best, and um, keep plugging along. Cool, thank you. I always like speaking to people who are not always the driver but are involved in motorsport in different roles. Tonight's guest has been involved in motorsport as a graphic designer and art director, and he is now a freelancer designer for all aspects of motorsport. So to find out more about what he does and what he's doing now, I welcome Mikey Harland. So how are you tonight, Mikey? I'm doing really well, Flipper. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, it's, it's great to have you on. Can, yeah, so you mentioned when you were younger, you used to hang around the track. As you got a bit older, you got a, di- a diploma as an interactive designer. How did you go starting to work in the motorsport industry? Yeah, good question. Um, (laughs) So uh, it's a really weird one, to be honest, and it's kind of surreal to tell the story, but I got into motorsport through sim racing. And I got into sim racing because uh, there was a game that allowed you to create your own liveries on the cars. And that was always something I really, really wanted to do when I was younger. You did some work for Supercars and the Shannon's National Series. That would have been a yeah. lot of fun. Do you have a favourite memory from that time? Oh, yeah. Like, hands down the bend. Um, round two of the Australian GT Endurance Championship. We had Liam Talbot and Shane Van Gisbergen driving the car. Um, it wasn't even so much that we won, and that was Trofeo Motorsports' first win. It wasn't even that. Um, or the fact that the weather was terrible all day. Um, it wasn't even that, you know. The best moment, it was like one of those little motorsport moments when you really see how good people are at their craft. And that moment was when we were in the garage and Shane got on the radio, he had seen a car spin, and he noticed that that car was starting to roll back. And so he got on the radio to kill it and let Killer know I think there's going to be a safety car. I think we should box now. So as you know, with GT racing, you've got compulsory pit stop times. They go for a long time. You've got to sit there based on your um, your driver ranking. So he made the call to box early and, and do the, the mandatory pit stop. And as he's entering pit lane, the yellow flags came out. 
they basically got a free pit stop and they absolutely cruised home for the win. It was it was a kind of in that moment when I realised just how good the people around me actually are at what they do. Um, it, it was really, really awesome, man. Honestly, you know, it, it did make me feel pretty special to be part of that, you know, and just to watch it back on the broadcast. Yeah, won't forget that one. Can't take it away from me. Best moment in motorsport. So much for sharing your story, and I look forward to seeing a lot, lot more cool designs. You're a legend, Flipper. You do a bloody good job with the stream, mate. Logan, so to find out more about his racing journey, how are you, Campbell? Good, good. Thanks for having me on. I'm really excited to be here. So where did it all start for you? Uh, it started back in 2016, so I was 12, and, um, you know, my dad was a uh, co-driver back in in the East Rally days, but I never quite took an interest. And he said, oh, come watch this film. It was the, the Rush film with Nicky Lauder and James Hunt. And I, from that, I just found the love for it and somehow found go-karts. And I, I went to dad and said, oh, can I be going to go kart And he said, no, because he knew how much it was going to cost. So um, that's how I got into it. And then, yeah, I've just kind of, from watching Rush, found Formula One and then found go kart And where did you start off racing in the Toyota 86? Do you remember your first race? Yeah, yeah, it was at Bathurst at the end of the year, which was awesome, you know, the, a whole week of just being at Bathurst. I mean, we only had a, a session a day, but it was just awesome. Like, I'd never been to Bathurst in my life, but to also go and drive there was just awesome and watch the 1000, seriously, seriously cool. So how did the opportunity come about that you got to drive in an Erebus supercar? Uh, that came up just, I was actually at Norwell getting some, some training in before a race and, um, the head coach there, well, no, uh, Erebus truck drove in and, you know, we kind of asked, oh, what's going on there? And they said, you know, this is happening. Um, are you interested? And obviously said yes. Um, it was really, really, really cool. I didn't didn't quite know what I was in for till I got in the car. Um, there was a group of, I think, six of us and it was just, you know, smiles all around. It was such a great day. Everyone really enjoyed it. I bet there was smiles all around. Um, I would be smiling too if I got the opportunity to drive. <laughs> Supercar. Thanks for having me, Matt. Yep. And uh, what's your dad's name? Will. Will Logan. Thanks, Will. I uh, really appreciate <laughs> you watching the show. Hi, everybody. I'm here with Jeremy Gorski. So, Jeremy, what do you race? I uh, race as VSC Sports Sands, mate. And how long have you been racing for? I uh, started racing about six years ago in the junior sedans and now moved up to the sports sedans. So it's actually my first out in tonight in the, um, in the XF. Um, yeah, very excited. You going today? I'm all right. Last night was all right until the car, um, blew, I wouldn't say blew up in a puff of smoke, but yeah, it caught a bit of a power steering issue. But besides that, we're going good. Hey, Peter, how are you going? Good man, yourself? Uh, everyone else seems to be having some troubles. What about yourself? Any troubles so far? Uh, the only troubles we really have is the crew. Um, they're usually the biggest troubles out of everything. But um... Chelsea, how have you been going this weekend? Um, yeah, not too bad. Uh, it's probably the first night we've been at Heartland, actually ever. We've been at Heartland, so it'd be good to experience a big track. But to ladies who race in Speedway, what do you two race? Um, I'm racing a sports sedan. I'm in the sports sedan too. And uh... so, this week I have someone on the show I'm very grateful was in the right place at the right time a few weeks back when I had my accident with an accredited motorsport photographer. So how are you tonight, Phil? Yeah, I'm doing well, thank you, Ayrton. It's, it's good to, to see you without the helmet and with a bit of a smile on your face. Yeah, definitely. I am a lot better than the last time you saw me, and I really appreciate you following up with my parents and checking on me as well. And I'm glad that it all turned out okay in the end. And how did you progress into motorsport photography? I started um, in the early 2000s, I think. Um, a friend had, uh, was upgrading his gear, so I, I bought his digital camera. And I just started uh, enjoying it from, from, the, uh, from the spectator side of the fence. And um, I was part of a, a place called V8 Central, which is a, an online motorsport forum. And uh, I would share my photos uh, the week after the race of the different categories. Have you ever been in any scary moments where you've been a little too close to the action, apart from me? <laughs> apart from you? Yeah. Um, I mean, if you're down at the fence often enough, it's going to happen. 
I think the closest one was actually, there was actually two on the same event. Um, I went to historic uh, Baskerville in Tassie, and um, at the top of the track, there's a blind left-hand corner. And uh, the light cars tend to lift their wheels as as they come over. And one of the Cortinas uh, came around that corner just a little bit too high up. And uh, if he had kept trying to take the corner, he would, he would have rolled. Uh, he was an older bloke and he he was very clued in. And he turned into uh, into it, which of course made, made him head towards the fence. And um, so I was standing sort of, a meter up, a meter back, and he's driven through this mud patch that had been belting rain uh, in the previous days, and um, he's come in and pretty much hit the hit the fence right at my feet, and so that caught my attention, and the, and also the the other one from that meeting, I think it was a, an RX seven from memory and a Commodore off the start line, um, and there'd been a, a wheel touch. And they both just turned right and straight into the fence. And because the ground was so soft, the fence moved quite a bit. Um, so it makes you a little bit more wary and where you stand and sort of give a little bit more room when, when the ground's a bit softer. Thanks so much for speaking to me today, Phil. Uh, once again, I look forward to looking out. Uh, I thank you for looking out for me at Winton and hopefully next time capture lots of photos of me on the, on the track. <laughs> Tonight's guest has been a winner in the state championship rounds, as well as being a podium in the national rounds in Formula Ford racing. So it's a big welcome to Cody Donald. How are you tonight, Cody? Yeah, good, mate. It, uh, yeah, I'm enjoying the night so far and good to get on here and have a chat about racing. So I'm excited. Yeah, it is. Um, what, do you, what got you into motorsport? So how did you first start? Uh, so my family's two-wheel background. So I've got an uncle, Cam Donald, that races Isle of Man still races to this day. Um, my my dad, Darren Donald, um, he raced two wheels as well. Back in the day, he raced a 250 GP bike, got into dirt bikes, stuff like that. Um, so it's kind of, I guess, almost come in the blood, bit of a two wheel background. Um, and then I got into the two wheels and yeah, dad saw me as a bit of a hazard. So he um, took me off it straight away when I started warming up my tires when I was on the dirt bike. Um, and yeah, we ventured from obviously that day and then um, we got in touch with the go-karts and since then, the rest is history and, yeah, it's good. Like to Formula Ford, did you start with Bolton straight away or did you have a different... No, so we started um, in a Miguel. So we did our first kind of... Um, so it was... With our years of Formula Ford, they're being kind of like on and off. So we do... Um, it's like the first year we did was with um, Dean Randall, Tree Motorsport. Um, so we got brought up through... Um, with. Dean Randall and then Wayne Mackey was a mechanic. He now works at Erebus. Um, and then obviously Tom was there helping out as well because he'd previously just won the championship. Um, so we got in through there, um, through Dean Randall. And then um, after that, we thought, like, because we didn't even know Ballin was around. Um, and then we thought, oh, he's in Bray sides and Australian owned, Australian made. So might as well give it a go. And then, um, yeah, we got in contact with Adam Macro again. And then he got us in with um, Mike Ballin and, yeah, we started that way and, yeah, we've been with Ballin for like the last oh, two or three years, but mostly we do our stuff privateer. All goes well for you, Cody, and uh, I've got to say thanks for catching up with me tonight. Um, yeah, no worries. I look forward to seeing how you go for the rest of the championship turns out for you this year because you're leading it at the moment, so let's keep it that way. Uh, to a driver who swapped dancing for driving and hasn't looked back since. She's currently competing in the Formula Ford Championship at only 16 years old. I welcome Kiara Jones to the show. So how are you, Kiara? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having yeah. me. What made you decide to go to Formula Ford instead of um, any other category? Um, well, at the time when I was switching to Formula Ford, all I wanted to do was race. And we decided that for what it is, for how much it costs and stuff like that, it's easier to go up to that because you can get so much further with Formula Ford. Like a lot of the supercars drivers and stuff all have raced in Formula Ford before and you gain so much more experience from having an open wheel car. You learn a lot of respect. I think you would understand how much respect, especially crashing into the wall last time. You learn a lot of respect for how to drive a race car in a Formula Ford because you, you bump wheels or anything, you just, you're gone. 
That's it. I, I saw you were involved in the FIA Girls on Track program. Did you enjoy yeah. that opportunity? Yes. So we went to, I don't know if you saw, we went to the F1 in Melbourne and we basically got to spend the day with, so we went to um, the Red Bull Empire Racing Garage, uh, the Supercars Garage with Justine and she walked us around there and explained oh, yeah. to us what the engineers and stuff were doing and what happens during a race and how they stand at their computers and like all that interesting stuff. Um, and we got to go to the Afro May garage for the F1 team. We got to walk through their garage and their um, race engineer spoke to us as well. Um, we spoke to a few, we spoke to um, Christina, I think her name was. She's the en a female engineer for the Afro May F1 team. And that was really interesting because that's what I want to do when I get out of school. I want to become an engineer for a race team or hopefully, or a aeroplane company. Um, oh, yeah. And so we got to hang out with them, which was good. And we got to walk down pit lane and see in all the F1 garages. And cool. Yeah. It was it was great speaking to you, Kiara. Um, you're a you great too. speaker. Um, most you. most younger people have a little bit of trouble, but I look <laughs> forward to seeing your progress further in motorsport. Um, yes, thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Tonight's guest was recently racing at Phillip Island when I was there in the Formula V. He races in a Triumph TR7. And to find out more about his motorsport journey, I welcome Alistair Ondachi. That's right, mate. Very good. Cool. Very good. How, how are you tonight, Alistair? Good. Thanks, Ayrton. Thanks for having me on, mate. It is a pleasure having you on. And how did you go on the weekend? Um, really good. So we've had an interesting journey over the last uh, two or three years with the little yellow car. Um, through the start of the lockdown period, um, we had a blown head gasket, um, which was about two or three runs after replacing the um, bearings in the bottom end. Um, so we spent most of the last 15 months deciding to rebuild the engine from top to bottom. So a little bit of work on the top end, on the head, uh, and new pistons and, and new bearings and all sorts of bits and pieces. And through the lockdown period, sort of had to wait a fair bit, as is fairly normal as we understand it now, to get some of the parts, including the pistons, out of the States. So after a 15 month wait, uh, that was the first outing for the little yellow car, which I've owned for about 12 years. Um, it's a two litre, four cylinder, um, what's called a Triumph TR7 Sprint. Um, and our goal since owning it is to make the car sort of one of the fastest four cylinder Triumphs in the country. So big weekend, it was quite exciting. Uh, we were lucky enough to be in the same group as the the Brabham that was racing there uh, with Tim Slade driving it. So uh, Tim had set up for the weekend. He wanted to break the outright late record, uh, which he did on Sunday morning, I think. So uh, I was lucky enough to be out on the track when he did that. For anyone out there who follows drag racing, this guy is super quick. He had an awesome weekend in the top fuel at Heathcote and he is flying. Next, he'll be heading up to Darwin for the Triple Crown. And last time I saw him, we were at RJ Batteries and I followed him around till he spoke to me. So I'm really excited to speak to him again and to find out more about his racing. It's a big welcome to Phil Lamentina. How are you tonight? I'm going all right, Ian, yourself? Yeah, um, I'm doing well. Yeah, it must be amazing to drive a top fuel car because they can get um, to speeds like over 400 kilometres an hour. And these days, uh, I think it could potentially get to 500. Yeah, so a top fuel dragster can accelerate from um, pretty much zero to 500 kilometres an hour in about 3.7, 3.8 3 seconds. So in a thousand foot racing, so 300. So that's the fastest accelerating uh, vehicles on, on the planet. So, um, yeah. Um, you have achieved a lot over the years. What would you say is your most memorable win? Ooh. Um, you know, I think the, the, the most memorable win I would say so far 
because I've gone through so much, I, I suppose, with everything, there was probably a lot of, a lot of highlights in my early career, you know, the championship and all that sort of thing and winning the Winter Nationals. But for me, probably where I am at this stage in my career, my, um, my win at, in Mildura um, only a couple of months ago, um, that was my first win since, you know, getting back in the car after the second accident. And, um, and that for me was, and, and to win in front of my home crowd, like, and like literally my hometown, um, that, that there to me is still very special. And have you ever been overseas before or are you just Australian? I've I haven't competed overseas. I've obviously I've been to America and, and been to a lot of NHRA races, and I know obviously I know a lot of people in in, in the drag racing scene over there. Um, I would hope to say that maybe you know one day before I um, you know completely retire or retire maybe here in Australia, driving full time, I might um, I'd love to go over to America and just. Um, just have a couple of race meetings over there just to say I've done it because I'd say that would be um, a pretty pretty cool thing to tick off the bucket list. Yeah, 100%. I think it would it'd be awesome to see you over there and uh, you, you'd bring me with me over you'd bring me with you obviously so um, I could I could help I could help uh, be a mechanic on the car but is there anyone I'm going to welcome Benjamin Rhodes tonight. How are you tonight ben- Benjamin? Yeah. Yep, you got it right. I'm good, Ayrton. Uh No, pretty good to be on. Uh, you know, I've, I've, I've sat down and, and watched some of your podcast work and you do a really good job with it. And, uh, you know, pretty excited to have my chance to be on the, uh, in the spotlight. Um, so you did hire karting for a while. What were you doing in between that time? Uh, so I started off with the uh, hire cutting, just doing it casually to begin with. Um, I, I think I was just rocked up at a place. So I was running with some mates and the, the owner of the track mentioned or sort of advertised somewhere that they're doing a, a weekly series, which thought like a good opportunity to get into. I think it was a Thursday night series. Um, so I got in there, went racing with some, some guys, some guys I still race with and know today, actually. Um, and you ended up doing Formula V and what chassis did you end up purchasing? So I, I was obviously back at the time, this was back in 2016, it's or 2015, actually. Um, I was still somewhat set on Formula Ford and it took conversation with uh, my TAFE teacher and also one of the students there, uh, and her name is Amy Mueller, um, uh, to maybe, you know, not, not to not run Formula Ford, but to maybe run Formula V for a year or two first. And log- logical argument, so... Um, got to meet a couple of the V guys in 2015, um, got a couple of track days at Sandown and I think maybe Phillip Island and got to talk to a few of the guys and help them out around the pits. And I ended up buying, uh, a, a, it's a modified Elfin, Elfin, yeah, modified Elfin replica, um, by a guy named Jason Coppard. Big thanks to mom who always helps me with editing the show and to all the people who listen each week. Thank you guys so much for your support. And finally, please support my partners who've been helping me race since I first started. As always, everyone out there is racing each week. So remember, drive fast and take chances. Safely, of course. And just remember to like, share and support this video and any past episodes of Grassroots Racer on my Facebook page or on Flipman Motorsports' YouTube channel.